Block mental health. Did you know that mental health in Africa has been neglected? There is the need to recognize the occurrence of mental illnesses, disorders, problems and issues among Africans and take the necessary action to address them. I believe that we need to rise and fight for our mental health. The question is, how can this be done? By changing our mindset about mental illnesses and the thinking that it is the role of government to eradicate these illnesses, particularly when there has been little response from them in that regard. Africa is a large continent whose people are more prone to mental illnesses and disorders, since most African countries are characterized by low incomes, conflict, social inequality, and malnutrition. The issue of mental health is one of the most poorly funded areas of health in Africa. People with mental illnesses such as depression, severe anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders have actually got little attention from governments and people alike, leading to their neglect in society. I believe the neglect of mental health in Africa is due to ignorance of the leaders and people about the existence of the mental illnesses, poor sensitization about different disorders that exist, and their diverse effects to the human and continental development. In most parts of Africa, people's attitudes towards mental illnesses are still strongly influenced by traditional beliefs like supernatural causation and bewitchment. Such beliefs have been used to justify the lack of provision of mental health care services to those that need them. Research shows that mental health problems are increasing in Africa each year. It has also been proven that there are strong links between mental health and poverty. Poverty is said to have been associated with mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety, where people in these situations always have no zeal for work and hate associating with other people. Furthermore, mental challenges are said to have been associated with high rates of unemployment, leading individuals to economic poverty and depriving them of social networks and status within the community. This is due to the fact that people with mental disorders often suffer discrimination in the African job market, being perceived as incapable of doing anything. One may ask for the causes of these disorders that have highly blighted Africans. Socioeconomic factors shape mental health. Some, such as slavery, unemployment, low income, poverty, debt, poor housing, social inequality, abuse of drugs, war and conflict, domestic violence, stigma, and discrimination have accounted for the most casual part of our mental problems. Many people living with mental conditions like depression are said to have given up in life and have no hope to make it in life. This can be related to the stigma they experience from the communities. But why should they give up? There is no need for them to give up. For these conditions can be treated and the victims can have a possibility to succeed in life again. This is when we should rise up and do something about this prevailing issue of mental health in Africa. I believe it is not too late for us too. It really is the right time. Given that most governments have poorly planned for this issue, the way forward is to take up mental health as the responsibility of every African to bring mental disorders to an end. 
This brings about the role of therapists, psychiatrists and psychologists who must be utilised. Beyond that, I think every country must formulate a mental health policy based on its own social and cultural background. Such policies must take into account the scope of mental health disorders and provide affordable interventions to the people. Above all, every African must collaborate and participate in this for the desired result to be achieved.